Welcome back everyone. It's that time of month again where we take a look at some of the hottest new mods released for Skyrim. So let's get straight into it with an absolute banger of an armor mod called the Colivian Prince. This mod adds an incredibly detailed light armor set to Skyrim with an imperial theme. It features a full face helmet and a beautiful flowing coat that also requires HDT physics. If you don't want to use the physics mod, you can possibly forego the coat and it would still look good. The mod also comes with a one-handed axe that has a similar design to the armor. This is a beautifully crafted set that looks stunning in game, but if you haven't already, go check out the author's mod page as there are a number of great armor mods there as well. Following on from that, we have the new weapon mod called Skyblivion's Akaveri Warblade. This mod adds a two-handed katana that has been released as a little sneak peek for the upcoming Skyblivion project. And to say the least, it looks fantastic. Can't wait to see what the entire project has in store. The sword itself features a dragon themed handle with a very long blade. So long in fact that it would actually get very close to the ground when placed on my back. The sword can be found in the Blades Temple, so you will have to complete some of the main quest line to obtain the new weapon. It also comes with a cryptic enchantment that drains health, magicka and stamina from your foes. This is a great weapon mod and one that will surely set fear into your enemy's heart. To go along perfectly with that new sword is this new MCO moveset called the Shinobi Magic Moveset. Made for a two-handed katana, this moveset features long-range slashes and teleporting attacks. There are several simple light attacks and some more complex heavy attacks as well, as well as a few combinations that you can chain together between the two. You could say the animations are very extravagant, but it works well if you're going for that style of gameplay. It also comes with a shinobi power that when activated, you will be able to perform different normal attacks and have additional reach with your sword. The animations are very well made and would work well with a ronin build wielding a katana. There are several requirements and although some are optional, make sure you go through everything when installing. Next is a new world building mod from Rin. Overhauling all the dragon burial mounds found around Skyrim. This mod expands each of the dragon mounds to have its own unique structure, making them feel more important on Skyrim's landscape. Other than looking amazing, it also makes them more noticeable than before, so you won't accidentally venture past one without realizing. These dragon mounds are pretty important to Skyrim's main story, so giving them a suitable upgrade was always needed. Several of the mounds will also dynamically change as you progress through the main questline, giving you something else to explore and discover. Following on from that, we have the mod called Windhelm Bridge Revived, which transforms the Windhelm Bridge into a much larger structure, with a main gatehouse and defensive fortification worthy of the Stormcloak stronghold. There are several levels to explore, including an underpassage where the guards can take their well-deserved break. And because the bridge is now much larger, there are also more guards to stand watch. This mod adds a ton of new details and little trinkets for you to discover when making your travels into the great city of Windhelm. Continuing with the immersive world building theme, we have the mod Environs, the Shrines of Talos. This mod adds several dynamic and environmental details to the Talos worship locations spotted around Skyrim's map. For example, this Talos Shrine at the start of the game will have several worshippers, but as you progress through the game, they will eventually be killed. Several of the cities will also change depending on the outcome of the Civil War questline. Some will gain a Talos Shrine, where others will lose them. This mod makes the world of Skyrim feel a lot more alive and immersive. It is also part of a series, so if you haven't already, go check out the author's mod collection to find several similar mods. Next we have another line expansion mod from Jay Serper, and this time it's Vampires. Similar to the other mods in the series, 
This mod splices together new lines for vampires so you won't hear the same little quips over and over again. Here are a few examples. Few can resist my charms. What's the harm in just one bite? Come on! I will feast on you! I'll kill you where you stand. Come on! I'll cut you in half. With a total of around 150 new lines, your vampire encounters are sure to become more menacing and unique. Also, don't forget to check out the line expansion mods as part of the series. Speaking of unique mods, next is a new quest mod called Baba Yaga and the Labyrinth. This mod adds a fully voiced quest line featuring a walking hut, a dark spooky maze, and more. Without spoiling too much, some things may be more than they seem. The quest is very well made and highly compatible as it doesn't make any world space edits, so you should be safe to install on a larger load order. It also includes a wild witch outfit, which you can obtain through the quest. The quest is not too long and depends on how good you are at solving a maze. I know it took me longer than it probably should have. Then we have another fantastic armor mod called the Mythic Dawn Armor. This mod features a set of heavy and light armor, both with a similar design of dark plated metal with a flowing red cloth underneath. The armor is inspired by the Order of the Mythic Dawn, who were a group of Daedra worshippers. There are also a few patches that add HDT SMP physics, which I highly recommend, or weight sliders for those that want them. For those who are struggling to find the armor in game, it's hidden within a certain Daedric Shrine. Overall, this is a highly detailed set of armor that looks and plays very well in the world of Skyrim. Next is a quick start overhaul mod called Paradigm. If you are sick of having to play through the Haugen prologue, this mod will let you skip that part going straight into the character creation menu and placing you outside the entrance of the Haugen cave. It also lets you choose from 18 different classes to start your journey. Each class will start with a different armor, weapon, spells, and gold. For example, I chose the thief, so I received a set of light armor with a bow and dagger, whereas the knight would receive a set of heavy armor and a sword. I know there are a few other alternate start mods, but this one is very simple and does what most people want from the mod to skip Helgen. Moving on, with each new month, there seems to be a new chicken mod released, and this one is no different, as today we have the mod called Chicks. This mod adds little chicks to the Skyrim, farms, villages, and chicken coops. These little nuggets are extremely cute, and add a touch of immersion and realism to your game. But I don't think you really need a reason to install these little critters. And lastly, is the mod called Visualize Vanilla. Other than looking like Lego, this mod is a utility that shows which textures are still vanilla or unmodded. It's a handy tool to find certain objects you would like to replace, or maybe you're one of those people that has to mod absolutely everything in your game. This mod will help you do that. Of course, if you want to make Skyrim look like Legoland, you are also welcome to do that. As a warning though, as stated on the mod page, you must install this mod through a mod manager as not to break your game. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed and discovered a couple of new mods to install. But as always, I will see you again next time. Cheers.